beautiful! Welcome back to Nat's Beautiful Life and day seven of the 12 days of Christmas. Today I'm going to be telling you about seven creative concept books that I read. I believe I read all of them this year. Uh, if not, it was like end of last year, into this year. But these are books that had, well, like I said, different little concepts to how they were written and the purpose and how they all work together. And I really enjoyed them. So, uh, without any further ado, let's get it. Well, I take that back. We're going to do a little ado right now. Don't forget to subscribe, click the little bell, and uh, hit that little thumbs up if you like this video. And um, that way you will never miss a video. We are doing the 12 days of Christmas. We're on day seven, so we have some more to go. If you haven't seen the first six, there is a playlist link in the description box that you can check it all out. All right, here we go. So the first book I wanna to talk to you about is this one. It is called Midnight at the Electric, and it is by Jody Lynn Anderson. I really enjoyed this book, and the only reason why I got it is because of the cover. The cover just spoke to me. It was on Book Outlet, and I just kept seeing it, and it just, I, I like stuff with like circuses and carnivals and things like that. So I was like, hmm, wonder what that's about. And I got it and oh my word. So how it kind of works and it's so funny. It's, it's a book that I learned something about. I normally am pretty aware of stuff in the past and the histories of, you know, my country and where I live and other countries and stuff. But... This is one that I really didn't know a lot about. It talks about the Dust Bowl era of, which, what years? Like in 1934, like the 1930s, um, the Dust Bowl area and um, all of that. So what's really cool is it starts out, you've got um, England, 1919, and a girl named Lenore. You've got Oklahoma, 1934, um, Catherine, and... Kansas 2065 Audrey. So there's a little bit of science fiction, but it's not what the book is about because she's taking you into the future. And it tells how all three of those ladies are kind of connected. I enjoy this. Um, what happens is Audrey, the one from 2065, finds letters and diaries and things like that. And so she learns about the history of the people who lived in the house that she's now staying in and she has no other relatives but this one very elderly lady um and it's just it's really good i don't want to give too much away because i don't want to spoil it i want you to kind of go in blind with this but this book is so good i really enjoyed my time reading it all right the next one is station 11 by emily st john this one is kind of like um, you know how in, if you've read Dry, which is the Neil Schusterman and Jared Schusterman book, how they go from present society to a dystopian, like, we're out of water society. This one's where you go from, you actually go from the night that we went from our society to a plague, like a flu-like plague coming and um, taking over and killing quite a bit of the population of the world. And they don't turn to zombies, they just get sick and die, so um, there's that. But it takes you through, and the way that it connects these characters from day one of when this happened and to years later when they all kind of converge together, well, I wouldn't say they all converge, but you, you basically are following these characters. And it's so well done, so interesting, and I will say, this is a book that you have to it's another one of those books you have to push through at the beginning. This is one of the book club books we had this year, and it was my pick. So, um, yeah. But I, I really did enjoy the, um, just the world and just learning about it and just all kinds of things and just how it all worked together and how some people adapted well, some people not so much. And it, it just was a very wild ride. So if you do like things like... Um, post-apocalyptic type things and how things build and how things become and where it brings us and then building back you will really like this you do have to push through like the first quarter of the book I'd say but once it gets you start seeing things come together then you really want to find out what's happening so I highly recommend that one uh, the next one's going to be <laughs> The Smell of Other People's Houses by Bonnie Sue Hitchcock I 
had this one was kind of recommended on uh, booktube somewhere i had seen it a lot on book outlet but i actually saw it on or at my library so i picked it up this is it's historical fiction but it takes place in like the 70s so if you look at the 70s as historical fiction that's how it works and it's another one of those kind of where people that aren't connected get connected or are connected and it takes place in Alaska before, I think before Alaska was a state, and um, how people, some people were fighting to make it a state, others were fighting against it, and then that's not the big thing, that's kind of like the background. The big thing is this, um, you have this main character who lives with her grandmother, her mother's got issues, she has a sister, and then you're kind of following that situation, and then you learn about her mother, what happened to her, then you, it, it's just, it's like, it's so hard to explain because it's so intricate. And you've got this fisherman and his children or his son, and it is just insane in the main break. No, was the fisherman? The fisherman was maybe the daughters, one of the daughters, dads. I don't even remember, but there was just so much going on, but it all worked together and it was like, it truly was a mystery without having like a mystery, but it was like a mystery. But you would just, the characters, very character driven, but there is a story, there is a plot, and I really enjoyed it. So I do recommend that. The other one is a rather famous one. It is My Grandmother Told Me to Tell You She's Sorry by Fredbird Bachman. This book is so creative because you've got this little girl who had like this sassy grandma who told her these stories and um, they, she really lived in this storyline and the little girl I believe is autistic maybe um, so she is she's very functional I mean there's nothing really there's nothing wrong with her she has um, very functional autis um, autism but she is a different child she's very smart and um, just really her best friend is her grandmother well her grandmother passes away and then she starts getting these letters and she has to kind of go through and she realizes that some of the people she already knows, some of the people that she meets are actually represented within the story world that her grandmother had created. So she was basically telling um, her daughter, her granddaughter, the story of these people and the story of her life through this grandiose world that she had created and, and was telling her and it is so darling you will fall in love with this little girl so much and um, it, it's just it's once again it's not only character driven but there's a story and I love it so um, I cannot recommend that one enough all right now it is I did the I started out with a book then I switched to the audiobook which I, I love the audiobook audiobook um, but it is a translated um, book so some of the stuff doesn't translate to English so well but it's very little that doesn't so I, I do recommend this one very very good um, the next one is the humans by Matt Haig I love this the concept of this is there is a human scientist who is a he's gonna crack he has cracked a math problem that will propel humankind much further into technology and advance just our society as a whole and there's these aliens who are like these people are not ready for this advancement yet so th this alien is sent to earth and he knows nothing about humans um, other than very very basic stuff and he doesn't understand it and he um, he comes to earth he his job is to kill this particular human this mathematician and then anybody who may know about the proof that he has and not only is it hilarious because he's trying to act like a human and he has no idea how to do it the second thing is he can actually talk to their dog like he can have a conversation with the dog and that's just hilarious in, in and of itself um, but it's just he falls of course he becomes to learn about humans becomes to learn he comes to learn about humans and actually like them and understand them and is like, you know what, sure, they shouldn't know this particular math situation, but, you know, I'm not going to kill everybody. 
that you tell me to kill because they don't deserve that. And and it's just showing this alien become human. But it's very, very funny because, like I said, he doesn't understand, like, why he... Just, just read the book. It's funny. Like, he's doing things that in his mind are like, oh, humans do this. And then, no, we don't do it that way. <laughs> um, but, yeah, really good book. Um, next one is what we got, River of Teeth by Sarah Gailey. What I like about this book, okay, so I think I talked about this quite a bit in my wrap-up for the month that I read this. I loved it, and then there were some things in it that were problematic because it didn't make sense for the time period. But what I like about the concept of this book is what if. I love books that say what if. So, how this works is, in the 18, early 1800s, so before the Civil War a long time ago, there really was a bill, really, I'm not making it up, she didn't make this up, there really was a bill to bring hippopotamus, as, it's hippopotami, but hippopotamuses is acceptable. But anyway, so to bring them over and farm them as meat because there was a meat shortage, <laughs> That did not pass, obviously, because that is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. But, um, yeah. So, this book is, what if that bill passed? And instead of cowboys, we had hoppers. <laughs> so, in this particular scenario, that bill does get passed. We do have hippopotami uh, farms, but, of course, some of the hippopotami run amok. They get out, there's a problem, they become feral, and hippopotamus, a, and hip, a hippopotamus, oh wow, is a, an herbivore. But these, I mean, they're actually very dangerous animals anyway. They will kill a person, period, they will. But these hippopotami become carnivores. <laughs> so, yeah. But, I mean, the concept was cool. I like that what if. Um, I did like some of the characters. Others were just like, this doesn't make any sense. Um, but it's a very, very short book. But I, I love the concept of it. I love the, I did love the execution of it. There was like, like I said, there's some problematic things with that for the time frame. That's all I'm going to say about that. But, um, yeah. I did enjoy the book. I think it's going to be like, maybe there's going to be another one. I don't know. But that, I, I love those concepts of, what if this happened? Like, what if? And I think that's like kind of like how Mistborn is. Mistborn's like, hey, what if the Chosen One didn't want to do it? And what if the bad guy won? And I think that's how what Mistborn is uh, by Brandon Sanderson, if you're um, familiar with that. I have it. I am, it's on my TBR because everybody's like, read it. So I'm going to. Uh, but yeah, so I think it's kind of that situation. Like, what if we had hippopotami farms instead of cattle farms? And so... That's all I'm going to say about that. The last one. Let me make sure I got everything right. So I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so seven. World War Z by Max Brooks. I love this. And this is an amazing concept because it was made to be an audiobook. It was never made to be read, even though you can read it. Um, it is obviously, um, well, it's 10 years later, I think. 10 or 12 years later after the zombies broke out. Um, once again, it's a virus that makes zombies because that's apparently what we're all going to be one day. <laughs> According to all the, the fiction literature, we're all going to be zombies one day with this one virus. But anyway, um, this virus comes and it basically takes you from patient zero to the pre like how they had to fight and, and um, claim their cities back and recreate civilization and all that. And every single character has a different voice actor and some of these voice actors are amazing here's some you may notice some of the uh people um but it was meant to be an actual um like i said audiobook it was meant to be told as a story uh as a narrative and so for that i just i love it um so it it was just very very interesting and it's like you really were listening to a documentary and um, I really, really enjoyed that one, I gotta say. Um, and I really like it when, uh, audiobooks do have, like, a cast of characters. So, 
Um, this one absolutely has a cast of characters and has a great cast of characters. So highly, highly recommend that one. All right, so that are, that are, wow, those are <laughs> the seven creative concept books that I enjoyed this year. And like I said, I think some of them might have been the end of last year. I don't know. But they're really good. I do recommend them. And let me know if you've read any of these books, what you thought of them. Do you have any recommendations for me? Creative concepts, things that are a little bit different, things that are just like, whoo, mind-blowing. Put those in the comments below. I would love to know. And join me very soon for day eight of the 12 days of Christmas. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day, gorgeous.